Hey there YouTube. So as of right now, I'm in a 2019 Hyundai Sonata. This is actually uh, my rental car for the next couple of days as my Elantra is still getting worked on in the dealership and they didn't have the transmission mount that they need to change. So they decided to loan me this for the last week and I'm gonna be keeping it now for another two or three days. So let's go ahead and talk about how this car behaves and ultimately its driving characteristics, the engine, the transmission, and basically what sets it apart from the Elantra and ultimately the 15 Sonata that was on my channel prior. So right off the bat, this car feels very elegant and business class-like. I'm citing my sources. This was from my fiance because I couldn't think of the word last night. But um, it is very business-like. It's very uh, comfortable. It's elegant, but it's not too elegant. It's one of those things where the car has a right to be snobby, but it chooses to remain humble. So I do like that just due to the fact that this is not something you necessarily expect from Hyundai as many of their cars are a little bit on the rougher side in terms of the ride. On top of that, their cars are a little cheaper. This one doesn't feel very cheap. It actually feels very upscale and business class-like. So it's one of those things where um, I'm kind of glad that Hyundai decided to throw that into the mix as it does make the car seem a little bit well more well heard and a lot of buyers are going to look at it and be like whoa the headlights are ugly but otherwise I kind of like the car and I love the way it drives. So we'll talk about the interior first. It's very similar to that of my Elantra. Um, just a few things that have changed. It is padded all the way through versus in my Elantra, it's only padded at the elbow. You do have the lane departure and the lane watch keep assist uh, and your blind spots. So that hasn't really changed too much. It's just there's no more lever to push your trunk up. So you have to do that actually by this little button here. The steering wheel is a three spoke steering wheel, but it actually is really nice. It's not overwhelming and I believe it's leather wrapped. So that's actually pretty good. Center-wise, the car looks very similar to that of my or of my Elantra. Uh, the screen was built in, which makes the car look sophisticated, and it actually gives it more of a voice. Uh, moving down here, you actually do have just a little bit more buttons and dual-zone climate controls, as well as your seat warmers, your steering wheel heater, and um, your defrosters as well. Moving down here, we do not have the little cubby top that my car has. However, it does have the USB port, and there's still an actual place to put your uh, devices. And over here, considering the fact that it is a key fob, you can throw your keys in here as well as your phone. Gear selector is really nice, and you do have an electronic parking brake. I keep saying Blake. Electronic parking brake. But um, yeah, I don't necessarily like that just because, you know, if my brakes fail, now I'm kind of screwed. And the technician did tell me that I was screwed, so I know that for a fact. But um, yeah, so let's talk about that. Uh, Overall, the gauges are pretty much the same as my Elantra, just the font is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if it was like that on the 15, however, the 15 was relatively very similar. It just, this 18, or excuse me, this 19 has a lot more. In terms of the actual engine, it is a 2.4 liter gasoline engine with 185 horsepower and four, or excuse me, at 6,000 RPMs and 178 pounds feet of torque at 4,000 RPMs. Now, the horsepower is definitely noticeable, but the thing is, is that the transmission tries to upshift so quickly is that it doesn't really make max use of it unless you're really stomping on it. Even then, it doesn't do it until the actual gas pedal clicks. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, I thought I had it to the floor, click one more, and then we're actually good, and it will go ahead and go at full throttle. Um, tire light is on my apologies. I just haven't had a chance to go fill them up because the dealership didn't fill them up, so I'm not going to waste my time trying to go fill them up right now. I'm still in the process of moving. But uh, yeah, the engine is pretty powerful, however. It does um, show you its power in certain situations, but otherwise, if you're just driving it like a normal human being, it definitely doesn't utilize all of it, and it ultimately provides a very nice, quiet ride. You actually really don't need all of it either. This transmission is a six-speed auto. This is the one that's actually been present in the Sonatas forever now. And um, the only thing that's different about this one versus the Elantra is the gears are a lot taller. So getting off the line, the car feels a little bit slower, but resuming acceleration, it really does take off. Um, in the Elantra, the gears are a lot shorter, like I said, and what that does is it allows the car to get off the line a little bit better, whereas this one, it just allows it to cruise. The transmission also shifts up super early, so it can shift around 1500 RPMs, and you really don't notice it too much, which is kind of nice because then, again, it provides that quiet ride, and it ultimately lets you get into those top gears a little bit more quickly to allow you to get better fuel economy. Um, 
This one also, even though it upshifts quickly, this transmission is very confident in what gear it needs to be in. It's not much of a hunter. I can't say the same for the eight speed or the seven speed dual clutch that are on these cars because I've never driven one. However, in this particular instance, the transmission is very confident. It knows what gear it needs to be in to pull out of a, pull out of a slowdown situation. And it doesn't necessarily downshift or behave behave like it's clumsy it's very elegant it's very well put together and it's like the transmission has a has a brain that actually functions so overall not too bad the suspension on this car is very plush compared to that of my Elantra and it can actually compared to that of the Sonata I drove earlier in this in this channel and uh, I actually kind of like it but at the same time I'm one of those excuse me I'm turning right into the Sun I actually kind of like the suspensions that are a little bit tougher on this one. It's not necessarily the case. It's very plush, but it absorbs the road really well, and it ultimately does a good job in terms of um, keeping you basically secure. You're not necessarily bouncing around in your seat. Uh, in this car, you will notice, however, that the lane keep assist is a little sloppy compared to that of the, even the Kona, and it actually kind of surprised me a little bit because the lane keep assist is something that, you know, car makers are very proud of and in this car it's not necessarily the most sophisticated uh, it does it does keep me from hitting the curbs and such and it does keep me in my lane in a straight line however passing through intersections I did notice that when the intersection is uneven even just the slightest amount it will actually allow me to go into the other lane and it won't necessarily say anything the car won't try to save me from going into the lane uh, next to me. However, I am a I am a cognizant driver and I can ultimately keep my own lane. However, I'm trying to, you know, test this out for you to give you an impression. And it does seem as if going, uh, going into intersections, the car does uh, get a little clumsy in terms of its lane keeping. So in that instance, it's a little sad, but at the same time, you know, you as a driver need to be cognizant of where you're going. Uh, it does also tend to fight you a little bit. The lane keep assist will, if you don't use your signal, yell at you if you're going into the lane next to me, but it doesn't do it all the time, which again is kind of sad because uh, the car should be constantly monitoring it. It's not necessarily a pick and choose situation. Um, it makes you kind of distrustful of the technology, so it's just something that I did notice. But considering now that I'm at the first, I'm the first one at a stoplight, I can do a harder acceleration on this car and show you exactly how this engine compares with that of the Elantra, just because um, it is a lot, it is 40 more horsepower, but surprisingly does not um, get up to speed as quickly as you think, because it is a heavier vehicle, so that, that ultimately has something to do with it, but it's just the gearing of the transmission is not meant for speed. It's meant for fuel economy, it's meant for cruising. Uh, this thing I could take a long trip and be very comfortable, so I actually do like it. I do like this Sonata a lot, but, um, it's one of those things where I kind of want my Elantra back just because I like the way that one drives and I'm used to it. But this one is not a burden at all. It's very comfortable. I'm glad the dealership was able to accommodate me, even though I kind of did want a 2020 Elantra because I really, really want to try out that IVT. I don't like continuous transmissions, but I definitely want to see how that one drives as there's so many positive reviews on it. So it's definitely something that's on my radar. But let's go ahead and actually uh, do a, hard, a little bit of a harder acceleration here and I'll show you how it functions. So it does pretty well, like it does accelerate nicely. Uh, again, the transmission's already trying to get into those top gears, unlike um, the Elantra, it does wait a little bit longer. This car does have t only two modes now, like the Kona, it only has a uh, normal and sport mode. I'm beginning to think that maybe the eco mode didn't really do much so they were just kind of like yeah let's ditch it no big deal because it tries to shift so early anyway but let's say if I needed to pass somebody I hope there's no police behind me the transmission is responsive so that's actually a good thing never had an issue with Hyundai transmissions they've always been really good I mean despite the four speeds that were just slow as dirt but you know what I meant so with that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. This is my impression of the Sonata. Unfortunately, I am a little bit shaky as the road's a bit shaky, but I feel like in my Elantra, this would have been a lot worse. So should there be any questions, just go ahead and shoot them in the comments, and we'll kind of go from there. Have a good one.